So, the last while I've had uh, some renewed interest in my uh, sleeve valve Briggs & Stratton here. So, I thought I'd try to make a higher quality video of it with my new camera that's now a couple years old. But it's a lot better than those, uh, I don't know, people have called them different things. Potato cameras or whatever that I had in the past. that They didn't take very good resolution uh, videos. So, this one's a little better. Um, so I'll just uh, point out the parts here. The first thing I'm going to redo, uh, review is just, uh, here's my little sleeve valve model. Shows you, uh, let's see, we'll get it at the sleeves at the top there. That's what the little crank shows here. And it's got the ball joint mechanism, the whole thing. And so the sleeves at the top, it, it fires, comes down, starts to open the exhaust port. Then intake port comes next. And it just follows that. You can see on the far side there's a compound port in the sleeve there. We'll follow it through its operation. It goes up, opens up on exhaust, swivels over. You get uh, both open at the same time for uh, your uh, valve overlap. And then it shifts over to the intake port. And so on the outside, show that same one. Got an exhaust port and intake port. It's exhaust and intake. So that's how that works. I don't want to get in too much into that. So anyway, this, this motor is built the same way. It started life as a 3.5 horse Briggs & Stratton flathead lawnmower engine. There's where the valves used to be. See, I got the holes plugged just so that uh, my oil in the crankcase doesn't leak out. But then uh, we made this uh, special um, port area here that bolts onto the original block and it provides the uh, the three intake and two exhaust ports you can show it better this way perhaps there's uh, two exhaust ports leading out and you got an intake port there this is a compound intake port with the two ports that close together and then intake port there 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 again at the top so that's just kind of it there and uh, not not ideal port positioning but I had to work around the uh, head bolts so you can only do what you can do sometimes on a um, what you, I don't know what you want to call it aftermarket conversion like this so but it is what it is and it, it worked made about three and three quarter sorry four and three quarter horse at uh, 3200 rpm the intake manifold surely wasn't um, helping matters out and the stock Briggs lawnmower carb I should have gone with a uh, Tecumseh adjustable uh, float type carb but I stuck with the gas tank carb combination from a Briggs that way I could actually cut the grass with it because the governor hooked up and everything and some of my videos I do show where I'm cutting the grass and you know number of years in the past there anyway I'll get on with the explanation here so here's the sleeve I got a piece of masking tape stuck to it there it's just a reference line from the center of the uh, sleeve drive pin so there's your compound port so you get an exhaust and intake out of that then uh, this guy would be an intake port no I'm lying sorry that's an exhaust port because these two over here which are identical are intake ports so the oddball has to be exhaust makes sense the the sleeve drive is downwards it goes in this way so yeah this port here has to be exhaust and this port's exhaust and then intakes at the bottom and then intake intake so you can see there's uh, four ports in the sleeve and you got the, the compound port there that does the job of uh, intake and exhaust so that's it. You got various cutouts at the bottom there to clear uh, crankshaft uh, and connecting rod counter. Got to clear the crank counterweights and the connecting rod. So the uh, drive pin there is integral with the sleeve. That uh, you can see here some of our machining problems didn't get it quite circular. And if you look close, I don't know, hopefully in the light, you can see here an ellipse, a wear ellipse. You get a piece of dirt in there and it uh, shows the the shape that the sleeve actually moves it's an ellipse for sure some of them inside I had parabolas that's the shape that the piston goes up and down inside the sleeve because they both move you get 
funky parabola shaped scratches in there. And to go along with the, the port area there, you need a junk, what's called a junk head. So that's it there. It fits inside, fits inside the sleeve, just like the piston does. And it's got two rings on it. I just used standard compression rings from Briggs. You can see a pin there, if you look close, there's a little pin in the groove. That stops the ring from being able to turn around like it normally can in a piston. They're both pinned that way. This one's not lined up. The reason is <clears throat> you want to keep those rings stationary in the head so that they can't hook up on a sleeve port like this one. You don't want the, the gap in it jumping into there and getting caught and snapping. So they're just pinned to, uh, like a, a two-stroke motors do the same thing a lot of times. Yeah, spark plug. So it's it's circular and it's I'll show you the shape of it there. So uh, forms the combustion chamber and just a regular flat top piston with the connecting rod. It's all stock. In this case, it's a uh, eight cubic inch uh, Briggs and Stratton. So the trick I used the the sleeve here. The bore on this is, we'll call it uh, 2 and 9 sixteenths inch, and that's a, a model 9.29 or whatever, regular 3.5 horse. This engine's approximately, say, 1980 vintage, um, so 2 and 9 sixteenths bore, and then the 8 cubic inch engine is 2 and 3 eighths bore. So I use the gap between them, the piston will fit into there, to allow for the thickness of the sleeve. It's thicker than it needs to be, uh, and it weighs about a pound. It was machined from solid, is H13 tool steel. That took a while to do. Started out like this. We machined the drive pin on it first, then chopped it off and bored it, machined the outside. A lot of work. Went from like I don't know, 13 pounds to one pound, something like that. But anyway, yeah, that's how the sleeve worked on it there. Um, then, standard Briggs crank, no modifications on this one. Now, I have to point out, this is the second version of this sleeve valve engine. The initial version used a, a one inch spacer here to house the sleeve drive. Uh, this one doesn't. On the initial one, we had to move, put a second gear on there one inch down to accommodate that so it turned everything, but this one doesn't have that. Who knows, maybe it's putting over five horse out. Less crankshaft flexibility. And you see, see on the head there some burn marks, probably by where the exhaust ports are. You do get little things like that on it. But, uh, so we'll, next we'll go to the sleeve drive. So this is the one that my friend machined. He incorporated uh, ball bearings in it, and a cover. I'm going to have to dump these out. So there it is there. The second second ball bearing slides in that hole. And then the cover goes on top. Cover it all up. Oh, you know what? It's going to fall right out. Okay, well, I'll take it out. So there it is there. He JB welded and machined this lump of metal onto the stock crankcase cover there. Flip it over so you can see that. Uh, it looks like he welded it on, aluminum welding, and then JB welded it to seal it. So that'd be a little bit of work, but here's the sleeve drive shaft. So he took the Briggs camshaft gear, one of the steel gears, and uh, machined it, and machined this shaft, and then, uh, you know, countersunk in three bolts to lock them together. And he also put in a COM6 uh, 3.8 bore self-aligning ball bearing. That's what hooks up to the pin on the sleeve. Should just go right in there. Yep, there she goes. So that's what drives it. I've revved this engine to 6,334 RPMs more than once. I never took it that high uh, when. Uh, we were headed on the dynamometer 
just because it was the different setup and I didn't, well, I don't know, I can't remember. We revved at least 5,000 at that point, but so it'll rev and it's held together okay, but uh, I suspect I could get more than four and three quarter horse out of it now. Less crankshaft flex, etc. Put a decent carburetor on it. My friend wanted to aim for eight horsepower, but we just never got a chance to put down dyno again. Anyway, that all goes back together there. It kind of fits like a Chinese puzzle. You gotta get the timing right on it. And, and that guy there mates up to the crankcase. And again, on the on the block here, we, we had to, uh, well, I guess he just used JB Weld on the uh, first block. I put uh, aluminum in here and JB welded it. But he's machined it all down to fit, uh, fit this out. And, uh, Yep, everything, everything works. Just uh, JB Weld takes the temperature and everything, sealed it all up, machines down, all that. So yeah, you can see a few ellipses worn in there, but that uses a little bit of oil because it needs a uh, needs a contracting ring around the outside of the sleeve at the bottom. But there's no way we could do that. So anyway. Uh, just uh, showing you the various uh, sleep ports there. I see that I've uh, talked my way into an 11 and a half minute video here, so I better shut this down so YouTube lets me load it up. So, uh, everybody uh, take care and uh, keep on liking those sleeve valves.